Well, hello. Today I'm going to do a Denise Love inspired cut up artwork. That means I have a large piece of Canson XL Bristol paper taped down to my board. I'm going to paint a background using liquid acrylic and then add all kinds of marks using quite a few different mark making supplies. And then I'll go ahead and cut it up where I see that there are interesting focal points that I would like to pull out. I'm going to start with my Sumi brush and a few different liquid um, or ink um, paints. So I have this lovely blue, the FW Indigo, um, Gold Green from Golden, and a Sap Green from FW again. I also have black in my fine liner applicator that I might use for, um, and white too and I might use them for mark making later. And of course I have my jar of water. And I think I'll get started with this golden green here. I'll start with the golden green and also with this blue, this eco line blue, um, to paint a background and then use the indigo and sap green to add maybe dots and swirls later. Let's check that this isn't gummed up or stopped up before we get started. I don't want any spurts on our paper. Now it looks pretty good. One thing that's interesting is this blue here, this eco line is liquid watercolor. So it might behave a little bit differently relative to our other paints. We'll see what happens. Now I'm going to use my Sumi brush to start, but I have a few other brushes that I might also use as I'm spreading out color. This one has some very interesting bristles and makes some really neat lines and swirls. And then of course there's the fan brush as well. So we'll hopefully add some movement and some shape with these uniquely shaped brushes. So I'm just going to start by laying down some water. I'm not really giving this much thought. All I want to make sure is that I have plenty of water on the page such that when I drop my liquid inks onto the water, they'll be able to spread and move. If I don't put enough water or it dries up too quickly, we won't get the same movement. So let me grab that gold green and give it a good shake. We haven't used this one in a while. And let's see what happens when I start adding my paints. Some of these paints will just spread out like crazy. Other ones will stay in their dot and you'll have to sort of encourage them to move around. And when I do so here, I'm not thinking at all about, you know, composition. I'm not thinking all about where's my focal point. I'm just spreading color around in a way that looks even remotely interesting to me. Um, and sort of just doing this in a very intuitive way, not giving it much thought. For the sake of time, I'm going to go ahead and speed up this process, and you'll notice that throughout this video. This whole entire process from beginning to end can take some time, especially when I get to mark making. I can go on for hours and hours in mark making. So just so that, you know, this video is a okay length, um, I am going to go ahead and speed up certain sections. So I'm all done with that gold green. Let me take out my eco line blue. In certain areas where there's not much ink, I'll go ahead and add some more water and let's see what happens. Oh, I love it. Spread so nicely. Now the goal here for me is to add some interesting movement with these fun brushes and also to let the paints do what they will. I'm just, again, intuitively moving paint this way and that, but I'd like to see it dry naturally. I'd like to see 
blending happening. I'd like to see where the colors interact. And of course, I'm not making that happen other than the fact that I'm smoothing paint around. So that's most of the background done. I think what I'll do is let this dry for just maybe 10 minutes or so. So part of it is dry and part of it is wet. All right, it's maybe 80% dry, 20% wet. I'm going to come in with the indigo. Now I noticed um, the dropper that comes with the container is very short and I use this color a lot. So I had to use one of my longer droppers. And the goal here is just to use a dropper to add swirls like this. Sometimes it's just wiggly lines, sometimes it's curls, sometimes it's squiggles. Um, again, a very intuitive process, not thinking about um, focal point, not thinking about really much of anything other than where do I see a blank space where I might wanna add something. I'm pretty much done with my little squiggles and swirls, so I'm going to come in with the sap green, give it a good shake. And with this one, I'm going to add dots. Um, sometimes I'll add them um, in areas where there's movement and curve to sort of accentuate those curves. Other times I'll add them like in a cluster and I'll have them, you know, somewhat lined up in a linear fashion. I'm interested to see with this paint as it dries, am I going to be able to tell that it's a green or will it dry much darker and it'll look more like as if it were black dots. So I'm very interested to see how that turns out. I'm satisfied with all of my dot making. So I'm going to go ahead and let this sit and dry completely before I come in with my other mark making supplies. The first mark making supply I'm going to start with is my Pigma Micron pen. And here I'm making rows of vertical lines. I like that the Micron can add some really delicate shapes. I believe this is a, a PN. Um, I usually either use a PN or an O1 because again, I'm trying to get those really fine lines. Next, I'm adding in some cross hatching. This is one of those marks that initially I wasn't enamored with it when I, when I saw other people add it, but as I started adding it myself, I really, really enjoyed it. So if you haven't given cross hatching a go, I highly suggest it. It's very satisfying. 
I also try to make sure that I repeat patterns. So if you can see, I did cross hatching in two places, but I'm probably going to add it in quite a few more. Here it is in the third place, because again, remember, we're cutting up this artwork in the end. So if I add cross hatching at one spot, I may not see it in one of the artworks that I cut out. So I often will repeat different types of marks um, throughout the big piece so that hopefully they show up in one of the final cutouts. I felt like I wanted to add a botanical touch. So here's a line with paired leaves, just sort of vining across the page. Um, when I was drawing it, I don't, I don't know if I was in love with it, but later I did enjoy it a bit more. But I came through and did a, a second type. So instead of putting, you know, these little leaves, I put in these little filled in black sort of curved leaves. And these were kind of fun too. So I liked playing with the different sort of hints at botanical shapes. All right, I'm finished with my micron. So I'm going to take out my white Posca pen. And the first thing I like to do is anywhere there's something that's that looks very dark, like these dots and swirls, I like to add a little line or dot um, with the Posca pen to make it look as if there's a little bit of a shine. So I'm gonna go through the entire artwork and add little shines here and there. Once I'm done with that, of course, Posca pen, I love drawing dots. I love, um, you know, larger dots that are sort of clustered together, dots that are looking in a more um, linear grid-like pattern and then small little dots, usually in areas where there's a lighter space contrasting with a darker space. And I will choose one or the other and add dots. Like right here, I'm just putting in these little itty bitty dots. They're kind of subtle, um, but so much fun. Now I wanted to play with two mark making supplies that add some new color. The first one is my Neo Color 2 crayon that is going to be in yellow ochre. 
And in this one, I like to make either squiggles that go down the page, just sort of meandering, kind of like a river flowing across the page, or these more linear marks. And then the second colored supply is a sennelier oil pastel, and it's in this lovely dark blue. Um, this one I love to show either in this sort of linear shape here or something that shows a little bit more movement from one space to another. And then as a last step, I'm going to use some Stardust Jelly Roll pen in this sort of silvery color. So you can't even really see it unless you're up close and um, in the light so you can see some sort of glitter just sparkling off the page. All right, so I'm all done with mark making. I'm ready to come in and see if there are any sections of this artwork that I would like to cut out. And I have these two white frames just that I made out of, I think this is also Bristol paper, a six inch circle and a three inch. And we'll start with the six inch. So I just sort of go through and do like a little viewfinding mission. It's funny that right here where I put the frame, I kind of really like this space. But I want to make sure that there's nothing right around it that I like even better before I go ahead and draw this border. I think I might come back to this one and continue viewing. Mm, oh, that's not bad. Okay. Oh, but I really like this over here. Yes, I like that. Oh my goodness, I love these little vines and the movement with the oil pastel. So I'm really feeling like I enjoy this space and I'm definitely going to go ahead and cut this one out. So as I'm going through this process, I'm just looking for that moment, that feeling in my heart that like, ooh, I really like this. And if I don't have that feeling 100%, like with the space earlier that I was saying I liked, I will say, oh, I'll remember this space for later. Um, and maybe I'll come back to it. I find that if I come back to a space two or three times, that says to me, okay, there's something drawing me to that space. But if I don't feel 100% that I like one of the spaces, I'll just leave that for either a smaller section to cut out, or I'll leave that for use in collage later. So I'm gonna go ahead and speed up this viewfinding and um, drawing of the border process.
I have all my pencil borders drawn on and it is time to cut out my little masterpieces. So I'll show, let's see, let's cut this one out. It's right towards the edge, kind of conveniently placed. Being that they're circles, I'm taking my time really nice and slow. Um, I decided on circles today because I wanted to use the pieces I'm cutting out to create um, a hanging mobile or mobile. I'm not sure how people pronounce that. Um, either way, I wanted circles in, in my hanging artwork. So that's sort of what inspired doing a cutout like this. Here we go. Here's my very first one. Let's see what we got. I like sort of looking at them from different angles and orientations. Oh, I like seeing it from different spaces. That's a good one. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and speed up this cutting process. Here's my next one. I really like the squiggles and the dots that I added with the indigo and the sap green. This is a nice one. So then the section that's left over right here, I will definitely save it to use in collage later. These pieces are so very useful. Here's that one that I debated on and came back to a few times. Let's look at it from a few different angles. I really like that vine shape sort of cutting across it and those more linear lines. There's just such variety in this one and I like it from multiple angles. That's nice. All right, let's find the next one. I think this one might be my favorite one. I like that there are botanical marks on both sides. I like that the oil pastel is showing some movement right through the entire circle. I like the squiggles um, on the one side and the dots on the other. This is, yeah, I like this one like entirely. There's nothing about it that I don't like. <laughs> awesome. Here's another fun one. I really like how when I used that brush that has sort of the odd shaped bristles, it created that nice movement along one side. And I really love the squiggle here. There were no other squiggles shaped like this in the artwork. And so I think it turned out pretty well. Oh, I don't know. This one might be my favorite one. I really love how when I put in the circles with the indigo that it blended in with the blue and it looked as if the circle lines were sort of blooming out of that blue like cloud. Oh, I just love that bit. And then of course, you know, with there being so many circles and smoothness in you know, the sort of linear shape of the oil pastels was awesome. Notice there are two oil pastel ones on these larger ones and one that had the neo color. Interesting to note. All right, let's do some more cutting. So then I had a series of three more of these smaller bits. Um, as I'm searching through the artwork to figure out, you know, what spaces do I want to cut out? Usually as I'm painting, I find areas that I'm like, ooh, I really like what's going on here. And I think of them as little moments. I'm searching for moments in the artwork as if um, the artwork itself were an experience. And I love the moment that's happening right here in this spot. 
So each of these little circles to me can be considered like this captured moment in the artwork. Awesome. This one's kind of fun too. I like looking at them from multiple angles. Maybe this way, maybe that way. Yeah. It's kind of fun looking at these as a collection. And the last one here, this one's showing quite a bit of movement with the oil pastel. I think this is the only smaller circle that has an oil pastel on it. Now because they are um, oil pastel, I will be spraying this with a fixative spray to make sure those oil pastels aren't getting all over the place. I definitely had to watch out as I was cutting to make sure I wasn't smearing them about. So here's what they look like all done as a collection. Thank you guys so much for joining me today in this process. I had so much fun. Um, I love to come through with these bright, happy colors and make these artworks that have so much movement and so much interest. If you create something of your own and you'd like to share it with me, please tag me on Instagram at ccarol427. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you have a fabulous rest of your day. Bye-bye.